Waffle, say hi to everybody. Hey, there you go. Say hi. Isn't that the sweetest face? Such a good girl. Oh, you loved your ears scratched. All right, everybody, it's day 20. I am so glad that you've joined us. We are getting so close to Christmas. Only five more days. We're in the 20s, no longer in single digits or the teens. Ah, it's getting close. So thank you for being here. We've got some fun things planned. We're going to go into the holiday kitchen at my house and we're going to make some eggnog. Yeah, eggnog. You heard that right. It's really easy. Thank you for being here and stick around. I hope that these, uh, these daily posts have been part of your experience leading up to Christmas and that they're enjoyable for you. Thank you so much for joining us each day and uh, really appreciate you watching. It is day 20's puzzle. All right, counting down just five more days. Christmas is almost here. Well, this is a message that they're wanting us to get. Relax this Christmas at Walt's Holiday Lodge. Let's just take a deep cleansing breath. Hey there, today we're back in our holiday kitchen and I want to share another recipe with you that's pretty easy. And the moment I say what I'm going to make, I know some of you are going to just turn your nose up and say, no, I can't stand that. But I would suggest that it's because you haven't tried the right kind. And I am talking about eggnog. Yes, a lot of people don't like, like eggnog because they're used to this really thick, foamy sort of stuff that you get at the grocery store. And I personally don't mind it, but I understand why a lot of people reject the texture and, and such. Because here's, I've got some store-bought right here in my hand and in a, in addition to the milk cream sugar and eggs, it also has guar gum and carrageenan and food colorings. And I know that the guar gum and carrageenan are thickening agents, but it also creates this coating on the tongue that a lot of people just don't like then mixed with the thickening of the eggs itself. So eggnog is really easy to make and uh, you can make it with alcohol or without alcohol. And uh, in some people, there's, there are so many different recipes out there, but I'm gonna choose one for you today that cooks the egg into, basically it's a custard that's not fully set. And um, by cooking the egg, then you can make it non-alcoholic. Uh, if you're going to do lots of eggnog recipes, don't cook it, but there's so much alcohol that it, it reduces all the risk of any bad eggs. Let's go ahead and try making this and show you. I'm using America's Test Kitchen recipe. Um, it's one that seems to have a good balance of the egg and the, you know, and the milk. Uh, I've seen others that are just look way too thick and others that are just way too boozy. And so this one just seems to be a really good blend and choice. So let me go ahead and show you the ingredients. Okay, the first thing for eggnog is eggs, obviously. This has six full eggs plus two extra egg yolks, four cups of milk, only a half a cup of sugar plus two tablespoons. Some recipes have a full cup of sugar, so this isn't as syrupy sweet, which again is a thing, uh, a reason why I think you might like it. It has vanilla and fresh nutmeg, a little bit of salt, and then in the end, you put in some whipped cream and you'll whip this to soft peaks and add it before serving. Um, this, that's all there is. It's pretty simple. So let's go ahead and make it. First thing we're gonna do is to turn our heat on to a very low medium heat. And we're going to put our milk and sugar. We wanna make sure to heat this up and dissolve the sugar, we're going to put in just a quarter teaspoon of the salt. 
and a full tablespoon of vanilla. That's going to give it a nice rich, rich flavor. Now we're going to whisk that constantly over the medium heat to dissolve the sugar. I want to make sure that it's not too hot where we would scald the milk. We do not want to do that. We also do not want to bring this to a boil because when we add it to the eggs, we don't want to cook the eggs um, too soon. We want the eggs to incorporate into the milk and blend. And we're going to do something called tempering the eggs. And I'll show you that, of course. Now that the sugar has completely dissolved in the milk mixture, I'm going to put the eggs in a bigger bowl and I'm going to whisk them just to break them down. slowly pour some of this milk mixture into the egg very slowly whisking constantly that's the important thing to keep the air and cool the milk down so it doesn't cook the egg very slowly this is called tempering the egg You don't have to put the whole mixture in there. You just need to put enough so that when you add the egg into the pot, you're not going to all of a sudden have just a pile of scrambled egg. Now, whisking that back into there. There we go. Now, we're going to keep whisking. And we're going to try to bring the temperature up to about 160, 165 degrees. I do not have my thermometer out here. The other way that you can know that this is uh, at the proper temperature is when it coats the back of a spoon. So let me show you this. Right now you have it on there and it, it's on the spoon and you can see it, but it doesn't adhere in a thicker pattern. So we're going to cook it for a little while, make sure it warms up. Again, not wanting to scald it, so medium low heat. What we're essentially making is custard, and uh, custard is just a nice creamy egg pudding of sorts. And uh, if you choose to add the alcohol in this, you would do. <clears throat> about a half a cup of um, half a cup of rum or bourbon or brandy and uh, and then you would adjust your whipping cream mixture that we would do at the end if you have no alcohol you would do less cream if you have the half a cup of alcohol you do a little bit more and then if you really want it boozy uh, I understand you could put a full cup of the alcohol in there and then of course you would increase the amount of cream um, to keep the consistency proper by adding that much liquid. But this is perfectly fine without alcohol. All right, I don't think it's ready yet, but let's look how it's coating the spoon. You can see there is a little bit more thickness to it, so it's getting close. But I want it to look a little a little more viscous, a little more opaque, but that's, that's getting close. Yeah, there we go. That doesn't roll off or drip off real quickly. 
And once we get it to that consistency, we want to get it off the heat. Now even with the tempering, um, there's always a risk of getting a little bit of egg curdle in there and nobody, I mean nobody, wants to drink that. So go ahead and pour this through a strainer. And then we are going to chill this before adding um, our whipped cream. Yeah, so there's a few egg solids in there, and that's okay. That is normal. But again, nobody wants to drink that, so make sure you, you um, strain that out. Okay, we're going to put this in the refrigerator, and we'll come back in a little while. All right, our eggnog has cooled and we're ready to whip the cream and fold that in. Now, um, I forgot to show you that I had added the nutmeg, the ground nutmeg, uh, to it as I put it in the refrigerator. I didn't want to cook the nutmeg in there, but I did want it to be in there when it was warm so the flavor would infuse as it chilled. And you can see this is a nice thick mixture and uh, it's very tasty, but what really is going to add some depth to it is the whipped cream. Now we want to whip this uh, to a point where it has soft peaks. It takes a few minutes. You of course can do this with an electric mixer uh, stand or hand version of course, uh, but it's only a half cup. It doesn't uh, take that long to mix this. Okay, this looks about done. You want it where it's soft peaks. You don't want it to be too stiff because it is going to be blended in as a drink. And, uh, and so that's about a good texture right there. And we want to fold it in. We don't want to beat it in and break all the, the whip down. So go ahead and just add that in sections. Just folding it in lightly. Now again, you're going to adjust the amount of whipped cream you use if you use alcohol or not. As you add alcohol, add more cream so that the consistency stays uh, the same in the, in the liquid. And if you're serving guests, put some in a cup. it with some fresh ground nutmeg. And there you go. You've got yourself a beautiful eggnog. Give it a try. Even if you don't like store-bought eggnog, you might like this. This is yummy. Okay, I wanted to do a little bit of a follow-up on the C's candy where I talked about that. Here's that Victoria toffee. Told you C's candy was a special holiday thing. This was a gift to us. None of these have been broken into yet, but I wanted to show you that I found a hammer on eBay. Look at that. Oh, there it is. C's, C's candies. And that's how you break the toffee. I'm gonna remember to not toss this out with the box when we're all done. Save that. Also wanted to show you the ornament. We hung it right here. Just love it. The C's Candy 100th Anniversary Commemorative Ornament. Well, hey, today's Bible verse from our 25 Days of the Christmas Story um, is all about those guys, the three wise men or we three kings. 
There, again, as I said earlier, there likely were more than three, but that's what history has boiled down to because of the three gifts. And uh, the verse comes from Matthew 2, verse 11. It says, Entering the house, they saw the child with Mary his mother, and falling to their knees, they worshipped him. Our pastor spoke on the wise men this weekend. Um, pretty incredible uh, things that he said. A couple points really stood out to me. Uh, one thing is, is we know of the three gifts they brought, but really they brought a fourth gift, and that is their worship. They fell on their knees and they worshiped him. So important. It's one thing to bring our possessions and offer them as a gift. It's another thing to bring our yielded hearts and to worship him. The other thing is, is that we think of them as the three kings, but really there was a fourth king in that space, Jesus himself the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. That's an incredible circumstance that we want to be mindful of. And uh, there you go, that's today's verse. I am so glad that you have joined us over these past uh, days and leading up into this final week of Christmas. And uh, I'm excited as we near the end, this has been a labor of love and has had its challenges for me and my timing and all of that, but I've enjoyed it thoroughly and I thank you for watching. One final note on the, on the eggnog. Uh, it tasted fine. I think I probably did overcook it, got it a little warm. And uh, as a result, as it chilled in the refrigerator, it did thicken significantly. Um, so we need to, you know, dilute it with some milk uh, or something like that. So be careful, be careful when you're heating it up. You don't want to create a, a a flan or a custard, you know, you want to still keep it as a drink. Okay, well, we all make mistakes in the kitchen, uh, but I hope you'll try it. It's still uh, homemade eggnog is so much better than the uh, store-bought containers. And, uh, and there you go. I will see you tomorrow. Say bye, Waffles. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Look at her wave. She's so talented. <laughs> see you later. Bye-bye. Yes, you're such a good girl. Yes, you are. You're just, I used to say you're silly, but probably me. I'm probably the silly one, right? Yeah.